All right, guys, we have another case story interview with Julia today. How are you doing, Julia? Very good. And yourself? Very good. So um, <clears throat> should be another fun one, guys. And we're just going to get right into it, Julia. So okay. uh, I like to start off all these calls with kind of the starting point, right? Mm -hmm. So could you build us a picture of what your life was like, you know, before you started working with Ryan, what kind of problems you were running into, some struggles that you wanted to deal with? Mm -hmm. um, I'd been working on myself for a little over 10 years um, on self-development stuff, and I'd wind up making uh, quite a bit of progress, um, but I had noticed a pattern of when I would get close to being successful, uh, taking, you know, reaching a successful milestone with my business, mm -hmm. um, I would just like physically, mentally, emotionally shut down. Mm -hmm. And I recognized it as a pattern when it happened like two times within, I don't know, within six, six or eight months of each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, huh, this is a problem. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm recognizing this is a regular occurring pattern. I'm like, and I don't know why it's happening. Mm. So, um, so I just happened to, uh, come across, um, uh, Ryan when we were in a mutual class and, um, uh, just kind of asked him what he was doing, what he does. And he said hypnotherapy and I'm just like, um, forgive me for my ignorance, but isn't that like where somebody holds up a thing and says, you are getting sleepy kind of thing. He's like, no, right. <laughs> 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 so I'm like, okay, so how exactly does that work? And moreover, how does that work during COVID when mm -hmm. um, you can't see people in person? And he's like, hey, just do it over Zoom and it's a conversation. I'm like, mm -hmm. huh. I'm like, yeah. well, I'm curious about knowing more. And okay. um, I'm going yeah. to so stop it right there. So uh, mm -hmm. let's go back to those two moments that you notice. Would you mind mm -hmm. like going into those a little bit for everyone so sure. um, they can understand the problem more? Sure. So one was working with a coach who's helping with me with my pit deck. And um, uh, it came down to uh, her asking me to reach out to customers and kind of like just get a feel for the market. Mm -hmm. And um, and I just I just seized up on that. Mm -hmm. And then um, further down the road, I was working with an advisor who was looking to come on as a co a co-founder uh, with my company mm -hmm. and had, you know, all the um, skill set that I was looking and in, in need of, you know, with a hardware and a software background, manufacturing, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he asked me to do a relatively simple task of like, you know, creating something of a sales forecast and again, mm -hmm. reaching out and talking to customers uh, to get a feel for their interest in the product. And mm -hmm. again, I just absolutely shut down. So. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you kind of knew what you had to do, but for whatever reason, there was something in the way. Is that fair? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, that's very normal. Very, very <laughs> normal from where we come from. <laughs> um, okay. So it sounded like those are more recent things. Did you have anything else that was happening in your life before that? That Because, I mean, two things is like, it's it's not like this massive amount of stuff, for example, right? Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it was big enough for you to notice. Was there anything else in your life like that that was happening that made you go, uh-oh, mm -hmm. like something needs to change here? Um, there were times that it had occurred before looking back. Um, mm -hmm. I just didn't really recognize it as being an actual pattern at that point in time. Mm. I just... Yeah, I just kind of chalked it up to my own insecurities or personal mm. failings or whatever. I just, I didn't really realize that it was like a reoccurring pattern. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And so was that something you were able to find out with the conversation with Ryan or was that something you were just like, you know what, this is kind of like the last straw of this kind of thing that I'm noticing. I need, mm -hmm. I need help on this. What was that like? Was that something he educated you on or was that something you kind of figured out for yourself? It was more I kind of came across it myself. I just mm. realized that there was something getting in the way and yeah. I didn't really realize what exactly it was, but mm. I knew it was significant. Perfect. 
Okay. And so knowing that you have this problem, right? Like you, you knew how to do the thing you wanted to do the thing, but for whatever reason you couldn't show up to do the thing, right. The way you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Um, so knowing that that was a problem, like what was the number one goal you wanted to achieve? Um, getting to the root of what that problem was, you know, mm. um, being able to address it in whatever manner I needed to, um, I've done enough personal development work where I've done the, I've done the uncomfortable stuff. Um, I've mm -hmm. done the, you know, honest conversation with myself kind of thing. And this particular subject, it was just, I was at a loss as far as what the root problem was. Mm. So this is going to sound silly. I mm -hmm. want to ask this, but why was figuring this out so important for you? Uh, Cause I knew I was getting in my own way. I, I knew there was nothing stopping me other than myself. And mm. that was frustrating. Mm. Yeah. Over time that can really, really do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, very good. So you talked about how you kind of met Ryan. It was through a mutual class. It sounds like, mm -hmm. sounds like you had a conversation with him. Um, mm -hmm. What was the thing that like piqued your curiosity once you were talking to him? Um, the different differentiator for, with talking with him was mm -hmm. that he was addressing the subconscious mm -hmm. as opposed to the conscious mind, because I'd been doing all this work as far as like conscious stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if, what I was doing would have worked. Um, I would have been able to fix it on my own, essentially, because mm -hmm. I'm pretty self-reflective and have a decent amount of uh, self-awareness. Mm -hmm. um, so my curiosity got piqued as far as like, well, how do you work with the subconscious via Zoom? Mm -hmm. And, you know, just, you know, I'm just a curious person by nature. And yeah. so that in itself piqued my curiosity. Um, so just, just so everyone has context, what kind of other work have you done with the conscious stuff before, just so people have a flavor of like, what else you've been doing? Okay. Um, I'd worked with a couple of different life coaches, uh, for varying amounts of time. Sometimes one was multiple years. Uh, another one was for, you know, a, maybe like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then another was kind of like a couple of months, um, mm -hmm. at different stages in my life. And then, um, uh, a whole assortment of like self-development books as far as reading them, um, taking like online courses. Um, yeah, so you've done not a little bit. <laughs> quite a bit. And then I just kind of recently had started working with plant medicine um, oh, beautiful. about two years ago. So as, a, as another way of kind of like doing a deep dive, if you will. <clears throat> so uh, in those plant medicines, is it like psilocybin, ayahuasca? Mm -hmm. Stuff so like that. Been, yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. Yep. Um, okay. And then, so obviously hypnosis is not something everyone just like jumps in two feet in right away. Right. Like right. usually there's some sort of reservation, mm -hmm. um, fear, something, right. Mm -hmm. Is there anything like that for you before jumping into this? Um, I was just, I was a little just uncertain as far as what, how exactly it was going to go. I mean, he had had a conversation with me before this, prior to our first session, um, because I did have some questions because there's there's parts of my memory due to my childhood where I just, I don't remember a good mm. chunk of my my childhood. It's just the black box. I have no, no yeah. idea what happened. Yeah. Um, and my concern was, I'm like, so how far does that tinkering go and I'm like is yeah. this gonna pull out memories that I really don't necessarily need or want to know about and he's like nope not gonna not gonna bust with that at all I'm like mm -hmm. okay cool as long yeah. as we're not gonna like open up that black box I'm good <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough um okay so then was there I like to talk about stuff in moments just because it puts the person kind of like right in that scene mm -hmm. um so was there like and you don't, you don't have to have one of these moments, but I like to ask this question anyway. Was there like a exact moment where you're like, you know what, I am going to do this. Like I am ready to do something with my subconscious. Did you have anything like that? Mm, I mean, basically just when I had the opportunity to talk with Ryan a little bit um, about what he did and, you know, he just told me about the hypnosis and um, I'm not the type that really like overthinks stuff before I do it. I'm like, ah, oh, that sounds interesting. Let's do it. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, great. So 
uh, going into it, um, could you describe the experience for people who've never tried it? Like, what was it like? Did you actually go into a full induction? Um, was it just conversational stuff? What did you actually do? Uh, it was kind of a hybrid, I think. Um, because mm. I mean, he he took me through the steps of going into trance. Um, yet I was still like cognizant and aware of what we were talking about and what was going on. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, basically, he just asked me to remember, you know, some scenarios that, um, were specific to the questions that he was asking, and um. And then just kind of asked me, you know, how I felt in that moment and, you know, what I felt like, you know, as my personally and, mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, you know, when we kind of exhausted the questions there, as far as question and answer, then he would ask me about another time. Um, and it was kind of like all total is like three different scenarios that I kind of, uh, went back to mm. that he was able to, um, kind of do more of a deep dive if you will yeah yeah that makes sense and so it sounds more like a conversation more than anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so a lot of people get hung up on the idea like someone's doing this to you right right Stuff in your head and it's like right. well not exactly no no um, very good okay and so uh going off of that like what surprised you most about the whole experience um how relatively effortless it was mm. you know it was just um sort of literally like just having a conversation kind of thing um and you know I didn't really have to work too hard to like go to answer the questions as far as you know like remembering stuff trying you know struggling to remember stuff that had happened in the past so mm. Yeah, because a lot of people think it's super, super intense. And it can be, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yours sounded like a little bit more easy. It's actually, yeah, if anything, I would describe it as just being a very gentle process, actually. Mm. Mm. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And so uh it didn't sound too difficult, but what was the hardest part about going through the experience? Mm. Um, I don't know. It wasn't too, too challenging. I mean, I guess just, um, kind of staying present more or less, mm. um, mm. and not wandering too much mentally. So yeah, good answer. Yeah, that's a great answer. Um, so obviously this is not something everybody tries, right? Mm -hmm. So did anyone in your circle try to discourage you from trying something like this or did they make the process harder in any way? No, no. and I'm really not the sort that kind of listens to that anyway. So if I make yeah. a decision to do something, I'm going to do it. <laughs> very good, very good. Um, and obviously it didn't sound like you wanted to quit, um, but did you have anything like that come up for you while you were going through this? No, no. Um, if anything, it's just more just kind of um, paying attention to myself and knowing when when would be a good time to you know have another conversation with him. Down mm. the road. Got, it. You know, got it. Got it. As, got it. As things come up, because um, yeah, I mean, like I have been out of the relationship circle thing for like 13 years and mm -hmm. last even remotely intimate relationship was over two years ago and he's like girl you knew what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh so yeah so as i'm delving into that i'm sure yeah. things are going to come up and you know yeah. present themselves and I'm like i didn't know that was still there <laughs> yeah yeah no he has a way with that so mm -hmm. Um, so we talked about kind of like freezing up in those moments before you didn't notice it was quite a pattern before right but now you're more aware of it um what was like one of the first big wins you had with this whole thing 
or even a moment where you realize like holy crap like this is working mm -hmm. um it really came from the first one and it wasn't like any one specific mm -hmm. win per se but it was rather um like an internal reading on um where my level of nervous energy was mm. and um and i was i've always been kind of like one who's just like got a restlessness about me when it comes to um just day-to-day -day activities just like always just like a nervous energy mm. and that pretty much dissipated by quite a bit like mm. almost completely um after the first session and that was really refreshing actually mm. and unexpected yeah yeah no i mean it's it's interesting when you don't have to work off flight or fight responses you know right right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's that's pretty common so um so that was like obviously one of the first things you realized was there like a massive result kind of that you were excited about or was it like uh, a bunch of small things that happened for you that you got really excited about um was there any moments that you could highlight throughout this experience that you're like oh that was really cool um it kind of brought you know more awareness to the importance of self-forgiveness and mm. um and as he walked me through the process, um, you know, giving a perspective of understanding that um, maybe what I'm going through is something that the people who were the antagonists also went through. Mm. And just adding that um, bit of perspective to it as well. Mm. And, and why was that um, important for you to figure out? Um, because it ties into, um, you know, forgiveness and, you know, just having understanding of people just being human and, mm. you know, not necessarily intentionally acting out in certain ways. It's just, you know, they're just reactive and stuck in a survival mode themselves. Mm. Very good. Mm -hmm. okay so those are some milestones um were there any other milestones you want to mention i just want to ask that just in case um yeah you know when we came across you know talking about relationships um mm -hmm. you know he kind of asked me well what's the biggest thing that was holding me back and Personally, for me, it was, you know, just a matter of feeling safe. And he was like, so what does safe mean to you? And mm -hmm. I kept throwing out all these different words. And he's like, that's not a definition. You're just saying the same thing over again. I'm like, ah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. And he's like, well, you know, um, you know, is it something, you know, it's safe, maybe something where like, you know, you're not intentionally hurt, uh, emotionally hurt or something like that and mm. i'm like uh yeah that mm. kind of resonates um and it, it was just like it was right there but it's like something that i just couldn't like identify myself so mm. it's nice being able to have him reflect that back to me as far as you know that but unbiased uh, perspective got it got it very good so um i know you've only just been working with him for what is like the last two months ish right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um has your life had a big change like how's your life different right now and if it, if it is at all like why is that important um not a huge drastic change just yet um but being able to make progress uh where I was struggling before and, um, you know, like actually following through and like, uh, mm. downloading some dating apps and just like start interacting with people and, mm. um, and 
you know, just doing it as a exercise, just to, you know, test whether, you know, people find me interesting or attractive. So, mm, great. No other agenda other than that, you know, if something else comes out of it. Fantastic. But, you know, I just like to prove to myself that, you know, I'm not, not the ugly duckling that I think myself has to be sometimes. Excellent. Excellent. Um, okay. So then, uh, what are you, so you've, you've, it sounds like you've been able to overcome that sabotage. Is that fair to say, or are you still working on that? Um, for the most part, um, there's still stuff that I think I'm, I'm kind of processing. Um, but it's sometimes where, you know, it, it's being conscious and aware of it and then just taking actions and just kind of like taking the steps to work through it mm -hmm. um, is more what needs to happen rather than an actual session. Mm. So Got I'm it. just kind of letting it kind of see the results over the test of time. And if it doesn't seem like I'm getting, mm -hmm. continuing to make progress positive progress then then that would be a time for me to reach back out to ryan yeah yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. and so now that you've kind of built this momentum right you've uh been able to overcome some things you've like realized some stuff about yourself and some stuff about the people you used to interact with mm -hmm. um what are you excited about next um just uh, seeing what what kind of successes I'll be able to um, achieve with my business ventures and um, and the whole relationship thing as well. Mm. Yeah, that's big. You know, just kind of tying those two pieces together because before it was just business was my only focus. Relationship, I'm like eh, back burner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, that's important. You know, mm -hmm. gotta have that. A little bit of balance. Interpersonal know? connection, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So I just want you to imagine now, like, someone's watching this call. They're not sure about what the hell to do with this. Mm -hmm. You know, hypnosis sounds cool, but, man, it's weird. Um, what would advice would you have for that person, kind of in the same or, like, a similar situation like you were in, like, right before you were doing all this stuff? So... My experience with Ryan is that, or my, you know, uh, takeaway is that he's a very, um, a very good listener. He's very, has a high degree of um, kindness and compassion and, you know, empathy. Um, mm -hmm. And he's very non-judgmental. You know, mm -hmm. if anything, he helps, you know, encourage you to let yourself off the hook and does it in a very graceful and tactful way so mm. and he's very um he's very direct and on point as far as asking the right questions that you know will get get to the bottom of things if you will the core of things mm. so so you know just be willing to show up with a willingness to you know have that conversation that's the biggest thing beautiful he's he, yeah he, he's he's very gentle like he you know he's good hands you know, like somebody who's a very safe space awesome awesome to hear that mm -hmm. um well julia you've been awesome uh i only actually have one last question for you is there anything else that you want to share anything else we haven't talked about something that you want to get off your chest or you know <laughs> uh warn people about what the what they're about to do and stuff like that <laughs> Um, no, I mean, like if this is, uh, something that you're on the fence about, um, it's definitely worth the try and, um, you know, be in a place where you're willing to let yourself be surprised with how good it can be. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I can, I can totally write that. <laughs> <laughs> totally write that. Okay. Awesome. Um, Thank you so much for being on this call. Uh, You're very welcome. Everyone, I'm sure, got some value out of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I just want to thank you for your time because you're going to help someone like move forward on this process. So really, really appreciate that. I hope so. So it's it's worth it's worth the investment. Absolutely.
Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, have a good one, Julia. Thank you Thank so much. You too. Yep. All right. Bye, Gary. Bye.